Welcome as we study together the Collect for the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our prayer this week reads, Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The simple sentence, or just the subject and predicate of this prayer, would be, O Lord, show favor and increase. But there's a lot more to it than that. And I've been working on a chart and a journal to help organize the phrases of the prayers and of Scripture to better understand and, a, and create a better way to study them. And I'll show you what I mean. This is a chart that I've been working with, um, with just the subject and predicates, and then what I've been calling a descriptor or the what. It's like the what's left or what describes that. So here's our prayer in the chart. We're going to go on and study the first part. And this is what we ask God to do this week, to show favor and mercifully increase. Show favor to your servants. Favor, when I looked up favor in Vine's dictionary, I found that it actually is comes from the word charis, which is the same root word as grace, which would be part of charism. So show grace to your servants. Servant, I actually spent some time looking at because when I think about a servant, I imagine the Ten Commandments movie and I'm watching the Israelites hauling bricks for the Egyptians, right? But this servant is not a slave. This is one who is pledged or bound to serve. And in scripture, being a good servant comes with, um, implies the subjection without the idea of bondage. So if you recall the parable about the man who gave his servants talents, the good servants are the ones who increased their talents. And a good servant produces good fruit. So we ask God to mercifully increase the gifts of your grace. And the next part of the prayer tells us what the gifts are. Made fervent. Fervent. I imagine fervent as being zealous, having zeal. But the very first definition I found for fervent was hot. And the next one was having or showing great warmth or intensity of spirit. Hot. In hope, faith, and charity. These are the gifts that we mentioned in the last part of that prayer. Imagine every Christian being on fire or showing great warmth or intensity of spirit in hope, faith, and charity, that they, the servants, may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Watchful is not like watching a parade go by, and it's kind of like the person who says, I have to watch my diet. In the Latin form of this prayer, the word vigil is used, and it is implied to mean vigilant protection. Imagine vigilantly protecting these gifts from God. But why hope, faith, and charity? Faith, hope, and love, or charity, are the theological virtues. The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that they are infused by God into the souls of the faithful, to make them capable of acting as his children and meriting eternal life. They dispose Christians to live in a relationship with the Holy Trinity. And we ask for these graces because we can't earn them. They are a gift from God, and without them, we have nothing. And that is why we should vigilantly protect them. In the Collect, we ask for the grace, an increase of grace, to keep his commands. And we have the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, but in the Gospels, Jesus gives us some more that are specific. They still come from the original Ten, but this is what he tells us, to follow him, to let your light shine, be perfect in love, treat people as you want to be treated, beware of false prophets, to forgive. He tells us how to receive communion, do this in memory of me. He tells us to make disciples and to preach the gospel and to love one another. But if we don't have faith, hope, and love, we can do none of these. There's something else about this prayer. Did you notice the order of the virtues? That the servants would be fervent in hope, faith, and charity? And did you say, ooh, we don't say it like that. 
because I did the first time I read this prayer. I don't know why hope is listed first, but maybe it's because people who have hope are watchful. One of my favorite examples of hope is Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied about the birth of the Savior, and the people waited in hope for 700 years. Isaiah foretold of the Messiah's birth 700 years before. And now we're in a time when a fax is too slow, and our family in salvation history waited 700 years for the birth of Christ. That is a lot of hope. And I spent some time reflecting on what and who they were hoping in. And I hope that we have our hope in Christ as well. I think Isaiah would like this verse, and it's from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, to live temperately, justly, and devoutly, more virtues, as we await the blessed hope. We're waiting too. We await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I hope that part from Titus sounded familiar to you because we hear it at every Mass. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This prayer is in the Lord's Prayer, and it is called an embolism, or an insertion or addition. And this prayer is to help us bring our focus to staying away from evil, remaining free from sin, as we prepare not only for the coming of Jesus at the end of time, but to help us prepare for receiving Jesus in Holy Communion. And at the end of the embolism, we join the priest, the lady and the priest together, finish with the doxology, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To learn more about the Mass, go to my website, juliestore.com. I've added a link to one of my favorite websites, mycatholic.com. It is a basic but customizable website for news headlines, Catholic news, but it has great features like the scripture readings of the day, a scripture reflection, and a link to my daily Eucharist, which is a wonderful point of prayer for your day. And check out the blog post links for this screencast. I have a video of Bishop Barron on the theological virtues, and I have a great video from Father Michael Schmitz on hope. And I have a link to the catechism that gives you a lot more information on virtues as well. While you're there, make sure you sign up for my email newsletter. Um, I'm working on some new things, and it's going to go there first. Thank you. Let's close with prayer. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.